Hey, what is up guys? My name is Achano and welcome back to my C++ series. Today we're going to be talking about constructor member initializer lists. That's quite a sentence. Basically what it means is it's a, it's a way for us to initialize our class member functions in the constructor. So when we write a class and we add members to that class, we usually want some way of initializing those members and that's usually done in the constructor. And there are two ways we can really initialize a class member in the constructor. Let's take a look. So I've got this entity class here, which just has a name string. It doesn't have any constructors yet, so let's add one of those. Maybe a constructor that actually takes a name in as a parameter. I'll also create one more constructor that's just gonna be a default constructor and it won't take any parameters. So in this case, I want to assign mname with the value of this name that's being passed in because I wanna be able to set my entity to have the name that was passed in through this parameter. In this case, maybe I'll do something simple and just set the player's name to unknown. Now this might seem fine and it's probably the way that you've been doing this in other languages, but in C++, there's actually one other way we could do this. And that's via remember initializer list. First of all, let's just take a look at this code and see it running and make sure it works. So I'm just going to create a new entity over here and I'm going to print the name of that entity. I'll call this one E0 to demonstrate my first kind of case and then another one with E1 and I'll give this one a name such as Cherno and we'll hit F5. You can see in this case we get unknown printing first and then Cherno. Okay, great. So everything seemed to work. Let's take a look at the second way we can initialize this. Instead of us just setting M name equal to the value over here, we can do it via remember initializer list, which looks like this. After the constructor, after, after you write your constructor and the parameters, we can add a colon. This can be on the same line as this. It doesn't really matter. Usually I like to write it on the next line over here, indented like this. And then you start listing off the members that you want to initialize. Now in this case, we've just got M name. So all we have to do is type in the name of this variable and then give it some kind of value. So in this case, unknown. And that kind of replaces the need to do this. So this is what a member initializer list is. Now, if we had another member such as score or something like that, we would just add a comma and then the value of that member. So in this case, I'm initializing it to zero. One thing to note really quickly is that if we had defined these variables like this, in this initializer list, you should be listing off all of the members in order. And some compilers will actually warn you if you don't write the code in order. And the reason this is important is because no matter how you write your initializer list, it will be initialized in the order that the actual class members are defined in. So in this case, the integer will be initialized first and then the string, even if you write it the other way around in the initializer list where you initialize the string first and then the integer. So this can lead to all sorts of kind of dependency problems if you, if you break that order. So just make sure that you always initialize your variables in the same order that they're declared in when you declare them as members. In this situation, it would look like this. We have our name and then we just put in the, the value that we want to copy from into here like this. And that's how we assign this. It's just, you're basically replacing the equals with parentheses and moving it up into this list. If we run our code, you'll see we get the exact same result. Okay, that's it. That's member initializer lists really easy. The big question though is why? Why do we, why should we use this? Is it just a code style thing? And the answer is, well, yes and no. No is probably the more right answer. I like writing code like this, first of all, because if you have a lot of, if you have a lot of member variables, this can get really cluttered if you start initializing them all in here. And it might be hard to see what the constructor is actually doing because maybe you've got some code later on that does other stuff, but most of your constructor is filled with just initializing variables, such kind of trivial and boring tasks that you probably don't even wanna, you kinda wanna hide them, which is why I like to put them in the member initializer list because just from a code style point of view, I just, I, I like it more. It keeps my actual code in my constructor very, very clean and easy to read. But there is actually a functional difference and this difference applies to classes specifically. If you write code such as this, where we assign M name to something here like unknown and you don't have it in the member initializer list like so, what will actually happen is this M name object will be constructed twice. Once with the default constructor, and then again with this unknown parameter because what's happening here is actually this. So you just created two strings. One of them you've just thrown away pretty much straight away, right? That's a waste of performance right there. Let's demonstrate this. I'm going to make a class here called example. It's gonna be very, very simple. Just one public constructor here. We'll make this kind of more of a real world example, I guess. I'll just print created entity over here. And then I'll also create one example, which actually takes in a parameter and I'll print created entity with, and then that X variable. 
I'm going to scroll down here, get rid of all this X stuff. I'm going to add this example class as an actual class member over here. I'll call it M underscore example to adhere to my convention. So this is it. That's the whole class. It's got two constructors, one which takes no parameters and one which takes this X. And what I really want to do is in my default constructor for entity, my constructor which takes no parameters, I just want to set example equal to an example object that actually takes in eight, right? So if I come down here and I make sure I'm actually creating this, let's get rid of this other example. We don't need to print this and we'll get rid of the printing of get name. All I'm doing here is just creating an instance of that entity object with this default constructor. If I hit F5 to run my code, look at that. We created two entities, once with the default constructor, the one that takes no parameters, and once with the constructor that takes in an integer. So we've actually created two entities, right? One was created up here. It's as if we wrote this like this, right? I mean, it created an entity here. Why wouldn't it create an example up here? Just because it's in this kind of member region doesn't mean that it's not going to run this code and create it. And then we've also created a new example instance here and assigned it to the old one. So we've thrown away the old one. We've just created an example class instance thrown that away and just overwritten it with a new one. We've created two objects instead of just one, right? Whereas if we were to move this into the initializer list, there's two options for us here. We could either write exactly the same code as we did before like this. And if I hit F5, you'll see, of course, we just, we just run the constructor that we want. We create one entity instance, or I could even just get rid of this and just pass in the parameters like this and just hit F5. And you can see that does exactly the same thing. So there you go. That's the difference, right? You should be using member initializer lists everywhere, right? There, there's absolutely no reason not to use them. If you don't like the code style, get used to them because it's not just a matter of style. It's actually, there's actually a functional difference. You'll be literally wasting performance if you're not using them. Of course, not in all cases. In the case of primitive types like integers, you, it, it won't be initializing them until you initialize them yourself by assigning it. But I use it everywhere. I don't discriminate between primitive types and class types. You should just be using initialize the list like this everywhere. But anyway, that's going to wrap up today's episode of my C++ series. Look at me saying today's episode as if this is daily now. I think this is the third day in a row though. So I'm doing pretty well. If you guys appreciate that, please hit that like button. If you want to support the series, you can go over to patreon.com forward slash the churno. I've got some pretty cool rewards set up. I'm actually kind of trialing a bit of a discord server. So Patreon rewards include that. You can also join it for free though, of course, link in the description below to like a discord thing. But on Patreon, you get some cool roles on that server as well as access to some of these videos early when they happen to be ready early because sometimes they're just not. <laughs> but for those times, they are available to you as soon as I basically finish editing them. Um, as well as uh, like a little, we've got like a private Discord slash Slack kind of a group in which we can talk about um, C++ topics in general, just directly, as well as, as well as you guys can suggest new topics of videos for me to make. And that's what I usually do, like this one here. So I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.